Marcus Hayes, Fight Hub TV, powered by Stagefront VIP, with a special treat with the ghost, Frank Martin. Frank, what's happening? How you doing? Man, I'm good. I'm good. How you doing? I'm doing well, man. Uh, enjoying what looks like uh, we got great fights this weekend with Ennis and Via. Uh, and then we got you on tap next week, man. Um, let's just jump right into it. Let's, let's jump right into it, man. Our team, Haryutnin, July 15, Cosmopolitan, Las Vegas, Nevada. Tell us about the bout, man. The guy's a bronze medalist, undefeated like you are. Yeah, man. I feel like, you know, he going to come out, you know, uh, he going to come out to win. You know, he coming out. He a tough fighter, I feel like. Uh, and he ain't undefeated for nothing. You know, he looking for those, one of those opportunities, you know, upset a guy like me who, you know, trying to upset one of them other top guys. So, uh, you know, I just got to go into this fight, man, just on point physically, mentally. You know, I got to be uh, on point in all areas, you know, because uh, I don't really – it ain't too much on him. You know, he got a, a, a nice amateur background, got a lot of experience in amateurs, uh, but the pros different, you know. So uh, we, got, we got 12 rounds. We got 12 rounds to uh, get it in. So I'm looking forward to it. Definitely, man. Uh, I know you're goal oriented. I know you're a guy that likes to critique himself and fix his own mistakes. Um, what are some of your goals on fight night, July 15? Just looking better than I did my last fight. You know, uh, it was some things that in my last fight uh, that I could have, me looking at myself, I could have, you know, been a little smoother on or, or, you know, sharper with. So going into this fight, you know, fixing those things for myself. And uh, when I go back and look at the, the footage, knowing that I did that, and, you know, we've been putting a lot of work in in the gym, uh, working on those things too. So uh, just basically, man, just looking better than I did the last fight. Definitely. Um, you're fighting a guy, you alluded to it earlier, tremendous amateur background, uh, a medalist, an Olympic medalist, uh, a guy that kind of, in the in the old way of boxing, in the old way of boxing, we're frowned on a guy like you. Less than 30 amateur fights yourself, but kind of skyrocketing up in the pros, garnering a lot of attention. Do you feel like you need to look good uh, and really impress versus RTM on next Saturday night? Oh yeah, most definitely. You know, uh, that's every fight though. You know, I feel like I gotta go out and, you know, just cause cause I, you know, I came on the scene late. So now, you know, everybody talking about me and saying if, if I'm him, like if I'm the guy who they uh, expecting to be or, you know, so, you know, I got that, I got that, I got that weight I got to carry, you know, I got to show up, you know, so uh, coming out for this fight, the next fight, the next fight, I got to, I got to keep showing up. Um, I don't want to have no declines in my performances, so uh Come July 15th, you know, I'm going to show up and I'm going to be a better version than I was uh, back when I fought uh, Revere. I feel that, you know, he got like a, a rugged type of style. Um, just kind of like he try to he try to offset you, you know, uh, with his movement. Then he switch it up. Then he try to like come in with that pickable style, uh, you know, with the head by the head back and forth and all of that stuff. Um I would say that he got he got one of them just unpredictable styles in a way. You know, he could throw punches from a lot of different angles and stuff like that. So he like he not like as fundamental of a fighter. So, you know, um it's gonna be one of them things, uh me just having to figure out that style. You know, those guys right there be the most dangerous. Yeah. You know, so um I'm just going into this fight, you know, like super on point mentally, you know, and physically, uh, and you know, defensively as well. So I feel like if I'm on top of my game, you know, I don't got nothing to worry about. You mentioned the weight. Uh, is there any pressure that comes along with it? I know everywhere you go, I've been around you several times, get mobbed every time I'm with you. Um, the pressure seems like it's mounting. Uh, in your own words, what's it feel like to be on the cusp of championship prowess? Uh, I feel like it's just a part of it. You know, it's something that a lot, like sometimes some people don't be ready for it or some people you know, they fall in love with it and then, you know, it affect them. So it's just like, uh, it come with it. You know, I got to see it before, you know, it started happening to me. Just being around Earl and, you know, other fighters, you know, I got to see certain things. So now, you know, uh, 
man, it's just, it's, it's dope to see it. You know, everywhere I go with somebody who know me or, you know, uh, telling me good luck and stuff like that. So it is basically, man, just uh, being able to handle that and, and not, not, I feel like not falling in love with it to the point where it gets your head too big or, you know, you lose focus of who you are. And when we talk about losing focus in boxing, the penalty for losing focus is losing consciousness. Um, your opponent, um, when I broke his film down, a couple of words that I wrote down, I wrote down that he was awkward. One thing yeah. that said to me that he was very awkward. And the second thing was he was hook happy. He hooks when he's coming in and he hooks when he's leaving. Um, maybe there's chances for counterpunch opportunities. I know you're meticulous in breakdown tape. What have you seen in him that you think you can capitalize on briefly? Um, the, basically the exact same thing you just said. Like he awkward fighter. Um, he liked to throw hooks. Then he got that that switch it up, pickable style with the coming in with the head movement and try to land a big shot. Uh man, so I see a lot of different things that I can capitalize off of that he do. Uh, but you know, when I'm in there is when I really get to see what what I'm able to do and what I'm not able to do. So uh uh man, I just plan on I just gotta be on point on my end. You know, I just gotta be on point. But I definitely see some I definitely see some stuff. You know, he throws shots from weird angles. You know, he throw a lot of punches from different type of angles. He ain't that just like, oh it's coming from this way. Like you gotta be on it. See it throw so you'll feel like something coming some way and throw a punch from a whole nother way. So just basically I just gotta be on, on my A game. If you were to have a prediction for your own fight, what would you say? Say that one more time. If you were to have a prediction for next Saturday night, what would it be? Uh, I'm 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 trying to put on a like spectacular performance. You know, I'm trying to open some more eyes up. So you know, I'm definitely uh, looking for a stoppage. Okay. Speaking of spectacular performances, you've been in with a lot of guys in sparring that have elicited a lot of the most memorable knockouts, namely a guy named Tank Davis. You shared the ring with Tank Davis before. I've seen his stories. I've heard the stories. Um, what did you learn from sharing the ring with Tank Davis, even though it was about two, three years ago, right? Yeah, it was a while ago. Um, Man, it was, a, it was a dope experience, you know, to get in there and, you know, to see, like, what one of them top guys is like. You know, he's super, super explosive. Um with his shots, you know, just super snappy with his shots and stuff like that. So just getting in there, getting uh getting that feel to, you know, getting in there with a champion or whatever. It was a good experience. Definitely, man. And speaking of champions, 135, the king of 135, the undisputed champion of 135, uh, the guy with all the hardware, Devin the Dream Haney. Devin and Shakur Stevenson been going back and forth. Uh, it was rumored that Devin sent Shakur a contract, a 75-25 contract that um, was was looked at as kind of cap for Shakur Stevenson. What do you think about those numbers? I mean, I don't, I mean, it's, you know, I, from what I've seen, they, Shakur was basically saying that he feel like he worth more. Um, fill him on that. He want a, a better split, a more fair split. But uh, I feel like Devin, I don't know. He took like a small, a lower percentage to go against uh, uh, Cambosis. You know, it was like, like seventy. It was like seventy-eight, twenty-two, or something like that. It was pretty low. Yeah, so he had to, you know, he had to do that. So I feel like uh, sometimes as fighters, you know, we gotta, we gotta, uh, we might have to accept certain terms like that, you know, to get in those in those type of positions, and then you know the tables turn. So uh. I feel like, you know, they want to make the fight happen. If that's what Devin, you know, uh, trying to get get him to take, that I feel like that would be the only way that uh, they would get the fight to happen. If they called the ghost and gave you a take it or leave it scenario like that, 75-25, Frank, you got 30 minutes to decide what's Frank Martin's team doing. Oh, we're going we gonna to bang out. We're going to take that. We're going to take that because we're trying to get to the top, you know, and then after that, table's going to turn, so. Um, I just want the, I want the big fights. You know, I want all the big names, the people at who all the people in the world know far as lightweights. You know, I want the big names. I know I didn't name drop a, a few times. You know, sometimes you get a lot of 
a backlash from name dropping and people say you're trying to get clout and this and that. So, like, I re really don't want to, like, too much talk about right. individuals, you know, just naming them and stuff like mm -hmm. that. You know, I'm just ready for those top guys, you know, and everybody know, like, the mentions as far as uh when people talk about, you know, the top 135 pounders. You know, I'm ready for every last one of them. It's about them giving me the opportunity. I feel like I'm I'm right there. Like, I'm there, you know, mm -hmm. like. It's them giving me the opportunity, them like agreeing. If I if I say something or call them out or anything, them agreeing and accepting a fight, you know, that's that's all it's gonna take, you know. But I don't need to be groomed, no, I don't need no grooming, I don't need nothing, you know, but an opportunity to fight one of them top names to just show, you know, it's just just that's it. Definitely, man. And when we talk about tables turning, um, your gym, Derek James has amassed what is probably one of the most impressive gems in recent boxing memory with the undisputed champion, champion Jamel Charlo, Earl Spence Jr. unified welterweight champion, AJ, ex-heavyweight champion, yourself on the cusp of being a champion, Ryan Garcia, up and coming heavyweights like Jeremiah Milton. What is that vibe like in that gym? Oh, we've been grinding. Vibe been, vibe been crazy. You know, it's been all work. Everybody, you know, feeding off each other and getting better. You know, a lot of good work and sparring. You know, the the, the atmosphere in the gym been it been pretty turned up. You, for all intents and purposes, Frank, you're tied to history so closely. You are having a front row seat to witness Earl Spence Jr. on his quest for history to attain the undisputed title at 147. Man, what has this journey been like so far? watching Earl Spence Jr. day in, day out? It's been good. You know, I got to, you know, be around him when he was wanting to fight and talking about it, you know, maybe like two years ago, uh, wanting that fight and just seeing it now, you know, it's, it's happening. It's here now. So uh, just seeing the preparation from when he said he wanted it to now, you know, it's kind of like, you know, he got, he got his opportunity. And now, you know, he's been grinding for a long time in the gym. Even even when he didn't have fight schedule, so uh, it's it's a good feeling to see him, you know, getting what you want. I hear a lot about when guys teammates you talk to teammates and they say he appears to be on a different level. Have you seen Earl hit that different level yet in preparation for Terrence Crawford? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but he he just one of those guys, man. He don't like he train hard all all the time. You know, um, he try to do the right things all the time as far as, you know, to have himself fully prepared, you know, for fights. So I feel like it's just I wouldn't say it's just another fight because it's a huge fight, you know. But for the most part, how we do over there at out here, basically, we train for every fight, fight like it's a championship fight. He just pushing himself to the limits, you know, saying him and the level that he on, uh, he always pushing himself to the limits every fight. You know, he don't train. Like, he trained hard for every fight that I've seen him train. He trained hard, you know. So, uh, you know, really just just he leading the, the and it, by example and just always, you know, staying in the gym, uh, training hard, you know, not taking too much time off and stuff like that. Like, a smart person, a smart fighter going to pick that up, you know, and uh, and, and follow that, that path. So uh, that's definitely what I do. You know, I pay attention to his grind, you know, and I, and I do the same thing. What are your expectations for July 29 when when you get Terrence Crawford and Earl Spence Jr. locking horns at T-Mobile Arena? Uh, I feel like it's going to be, you know, it's going to be good. It's going to be a good fight. Uh, it's going to be a chess match. And um, I just feel like, you know, he just, he just he just going to have that. He just going to – it's about who make the less mistakes, you know. And uh, we real sharp. We don't make too many mistakes. You know, uh, we got a great trainer. So uh, I feel like it's going to come down to that right there. And speaking of a great trainer, great trainers usually become great because they overcome monumental tasks. Uh, another monumental task looks like back to back, Derek James taking on Canelo Alvarez and his camp with Eddie Reynoso. Uh, what did you think about that when you heard about Jamel Charlo and the announcement with Canelo Alvarez? It was unexpected. I ain't that was the one that was super like unexpected for me. You know, I didn't know like it kind of came out of the blue, but 
for that to happen, you know, it's kind of like, like, it's crazy because I'm in a mix of a whole lot of greatness, you know, uh, from Earl to Jamel, you know, uh, just being on this team, man, it's kind of, it's, it's dope. It's dope to see all of these, all these big fights happening. And then like Jamel fight was super unexpected, but now it's here, two undisputed champions, uh, finna go at it. Man, I'm I'm looking forward to it. So watch. To it. Hey, to circle back to you, Frank. Lastly, uh, let the fans know where they can catch the fight, July 15. Uh, go ahead and plug yourself, man. The fight to be on. The fight is in Las Vegas at the Cosmopolitan. If you guys can't make it to the Cosmopolitan, uh, tune in on Showtime Live. Uh, maybe I think uh, 9 p.m. Maybe I, don't take me on the time, but tune in to Showtime in Pacific. Okay, yeah, uh, tune in to Showtime. You guys follow me on uh, Instagram at Frank Martin 2016. Tune in, let's go. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Marcus Hayes, Fight Hub TV with the ghost, Frank Martin. Frank, we'll see you during fight week, man. Take care. All right, now take care. Bye, man.